I've been eager to do this video because apart from trying to help people find solutions to real problems, I want this video to remind you just how important and sensitive your scalp is. This condition is called central centrifugal cicatricial alopecia or CCCA. It's a form of scarring alopecia on the scalp that results in permanent hair loss. Central implies symptoms start at the top middle section of your scalp. Centrifugal implies that the symptoms spread outwards from the center. Cicatricial means scarring and alopecia is a fancy word for hair loss. In this video, we're going to go over early stage symptoms, possible culprits, and solutions on how to prevent and possibly reverse this form of hair loss. For most, the progression to hair loss is a slow process. Early symptoms usually start with soreness, itching, or a burning sensation in the top middle section of your scalp. Over time, you'll probably start to notice hairs in that section thin out and break easily. For those of you that are in the very early stages where that area feels sore to the touch or the hairs are shorter and breaking, don't freak out. This is very common and you still have time to completely reverse it. Before we talk about possible culprits and solutions, let me show you a close-up of what's going on under the hood. There is a lot going on in your scalp. Everything you see here is alive, meaning they need oxygen, they need nutrients or food, they get energy from the nutrients to do and create things, and if conditions are unfavorable, they die. Just from its positioning, it's clear to see that the top middle section of your scalp is the most exposed to environmental damages. Sometimes it's hard to imagine how sensitive your scalp is until it starts to show symptoms of trouble. Due to its positioning and exposure to the environment, the hairs and scalp in your crown section is already susceptible to drying out and breaking faster than the rest of your hair. On top of that, we sometimes unknowingly do more to make it worse. Have you ever gone to a hair salon on a day the stylist was busy and she left you sitting under a hooded dryer for way too long? I'm sure something in you felt that something isn't right about that. But a lot of us don't question it because it's a professional hairstylist. The crown section receives a lot of heat attention under a hooded dryer. So improper use of them can be very damaging to this section of your hair, and most importantly, your scalp. Over time, too much heat exposure will dry up your hair follicle system and cause the surrounding tissue to become inflamed and irritated. Your follicles will become weaker and weaker, then shrink and eventually die. I'm going to be posting a video soon that compares hooded dryers, steamers, and the greenhouse effect. And I'll put a link below in the description section. But for now, keep three things in mind when you use a hooded dryer to deep condition. Wear a shower cap and put your hair into a high bun if you can. Try not to sit under there on high heat for more than 30 minutes. And don't use it too often. If you're experiencing crown issues, stop using hooded dryers until the issue is solved because the hooded dryer will make it worse. If you don't have any crown issues, if you must, you can use it once weekly. Just keep the other two points in mind and take breaks from time to time. If you suspect your crown section soreness and breakage is from excessive exposure to things that dry it out, like the weather and hooded dryers, there are things you can do. First, stop the activities that put direct or indirect heat on your scalp. Also, as you do with your edges, give your crown area a little more attention than the rest of your hair by hydrating and massaging that section at least twice a week. And remember to moisturize the hairs in your crown section more often than the rest of your hair. With the culprit out the way and you pay more attention to that section, 
Over time, the inflammation and soreness should go away. Hair and scalp issues resulting from tension is a big problem in our community because the natural state of our hair is big and free. Most of us are familiar with the damaging effects tension has on our edges, but don't realize how much tension and rough handling we put on our middle crown section. So here are some things I've learned along the way. Hopefully they're helpful to you. You don't always have to put your hair into four even sections when you're caring for it. When your hair is in four sections, each section is adding its own level of tension to the middle of your head. So change up your parts from time to time. My hair type is both dense and thick, so I work in grids. I do everything with my hair in a grid and can even have the same grid in my hair for months. Overall, this helps me out a lot because it eliminates the risk of unnecessary tension to my crown and makes it easier to isolate that section so I can get to it and give it extra attention. If you have fine lower density hair, you obviously don't need as many sections. Just make sure your grid removes tension from and makes it easier for you to isolate your crown section. Another culprit for a sore and breaking crown are tight updos. No one does an updo like a natural, but sometimes it can cause too much tension to your crown, especially when you use these tight closed bobby pins to hold them up. Over time, I've learned that dense hair flourishes better when it's free and not forced into tight styles too often. When I wear my hair in an updo, I usually use a puff cuff and an open bobby pin to secure my ends. Or I use a satin hair tie and put it into a loose messy bun. If your hair isn't long enough to do this yet and you're experiencing a sore crown section from tight updos, try pinning or rolling your hair back for a while and give your hair some time to grow. In the next video, I'll talk about some interesting ways plain old gravity can negatively affect your crown section and cause issues. Follow me on Instagram to catch up on interesting natural hair facts, coupon sales, and natural hair art. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.